Okay, hi guys, my name is Amir Hussain Yagubi and uh, I'm really honored and glad to share this video about gesture drawing. I'm about to create a kind of tutorial and share it on YouTube and hope you like it. Okay, so let's have some introduction about myself I'm gonna tell you something about myself it's about seven years that uh, I've been drawing and actually my focus just was on figure drawing uh, anatomy uh, and so on okay and uh, during these years uh, I learned anatomy Actually, I read some books, I've got some information, uh, actually, let's see. and after all these years, what I've found and understood is the most important thing in drawing and maybe art is gesture, is the movement and harmony which is hidden actually inside the forms and things that we see. So we have to probe into things, we have to go deeply to understand what they are so it's not a superficial thing to understand it's really deep and it needs uh, actually having information about it so it's science part of uh, uh, art actually is science so I'm here to share with you guys the science I've got about gesture, anatomy, figure drawing, and so on. So let's get started and get down to business. Uh, gesture drawing. So here is a question. What is gesture drawing? Why we use it? And then how it's possible to use gesture drawing in our career? So let's respond to this question and uh, Let's get started with the first one. What is gesture? For understand, what is gesture is actually necessary to look at nature. So, nature. What does nature tell us? Actually, everything you see in the nature has its own movement. All the living things, actually, nature consists uh, consists of living things. So, living things have movements, and that movement is gesture. And there's a kind of harmony beyond what you see so uh, actually this world had started with water the most important thing in the world so water and why I just uh, mentioned the water because 
as you can see, the water has a kind of movement like this. Some, there's some curves up and down, a zigzag shape that creates movement. So, and uh, it makes sense in drawing human. Why? Because 70% of human body consisted of water and so the human body couldn't have uh, lines like this geometrical lines the lines that we see in human body are just curvy convex and concave shapes all together they make the human body, they create the human body. So, even more interesting, all the molecules of water, if you just put them together, as you can see, there's a movement between them. Uh, actually, it's like a hidden line, a hidden axis. Even big and bigger than that, if you see the universe, imagine that here's the sun. And all around it, we've got planets. Here is Earth. And uh, as you can see, we've got some ellipses here. And you see the movement here all the planets go around the sun in a nice movement actually all these lines uh, don't exist we humans have created them so I've just uh, told you guys these things to make you think about what's going on out there and uh, not to draw human body without thinking without think what it is before draw anything think what it is I'm drawing it's really a, a, an important question really an important question and I think I've answered why we use gesture uh, because the human body is a part of nature and nature can't be solid and uh, it has movements, guys. So this is the answer of this question. And third one, how? I'm going to tell you how to draw gesture in a minute. Okay. Here we go. There is a, a drawing by Federico Barocci. Uh, from the Renaissance period and uh, I'm gonna tell you now how we how we can actually 
deal with gesture. Now we know that why we have to use it and what is it. And now it's time to see how we can use it. And what's the procedure of drawing human body via gesture. So let's see. In the human body, we've got some parts, some major parts. So, I'm gonna tell you the major parts of human body. There are eight parts. First one is head second one actually is rib cage third one pelvis then we got spine then two arms and two legs that's it so here is eight major parts of the body that we really count on them and uh, let's tell you guys what are the important ones look head rib cage and pelvis are really important but the most important one is spine. Okay? Because uh, actually the movement that head, ribcage and pelvis have is related on spine, how the spine moves. And uh, Other points that I can mention here, I can tell you something about design. What is design? So, actually, design is a little bit different with drawing we have to differentiate it from drawing and design is when you draw something based on a kind of science knowledge that you get through studies written books etc and we we've got a triangle here and uh, we call it we call this triangle primary of design primaries of design actually and uh, one of them is line and texture here we've got form which is K 
chiaroscuro it's an Italian word which means light versus sorry light versus shadow if I want to tell you more about this word chiaro means light and scuro in Italian means shadow so in this way you can remember this word because uh, we really need actually to know this word and how it works on the other side we've got mass We call it notan. Uh, it's a Japanese word which tells us something about light versus dark. Okay, let's break it down. For example, we've talked about chiaroscuro and uh, imagine a sphere okay. And now I'm going to make this side a little bit darker so in this way it, it gives the viewer some information about light and shadow Where is light and where is the shadow? So it tells us that light comes from here, like this. And I don't want to talk about half tones, highlight, and uh, reflected light, etc. So it's chiaroscuro. Light versus shadow. On the other side, we've talked about Notan, which is a 2D design, but this one gives us a kind of 3D perception of form. Notan. So what's what is it? Imagine the yin yang sign. Here, and now I'm gonna make this part dark. So you see that it doesn't give you a, a kind of understanding of space or form Notan is actually Notan is uh, 
mass dominant and uh, chiaroscuro is shape dominant. It, it tells us about form. So one of the points that I wanted to tell you is about form and mass and line. Okay, so we've talked about mass and form. And now let's talk about line. What kind of characteristics line should have? And what are the must and what are the must nots? And drawing the figure and how we should use line in, our, uh, in order to be harmonious and actually and have a kind of melody in our artwork okay So let's talk about symmetry and asymmetry of line. And asymmetry. Okay. How does symmetry and asymmetry uh, affect our design and our drawing? So, here I draw these lines. And here, I make a kind of change in organizing these lines. I think you remember that we talk about water and its design, the movement it got. And uh, let's say why it happens. Because you're talking about visual knowledge, visual statements. So we have to know how the visual elements work. Here. If an audience or viewer just look at these lines, the eye would be stuck here and it can move and it can move down to the next one because the design that we have here is symmetrical and it's not asymmetrical but here The eye would move to this point, then here, here, and it goes down. And we've got a zigzag. Let's change the color a bit. A kind of zigzag shape here so and if you just draw a human body like this then you've got a snowman
we try not to be like this so in your drawing just try to make your marks asymmetrical okay we need asymmetrical lines to get movement this is what we need so okay just I don't want to make you guys tired let's draw this marvelous drawing by Federico Barocci here you remember that I told you something about major parts head ribcage pelvis spine arms and legs and let's see how we have to combine all these things to have a harmonious and coordinated drawing okay first step step sorry step step one is to draw head so here I just draw a circle a simple circle for the head then we start to draw a spine we look how the neck moves because the spine has three parts cervical part thoracic part and lumbar part I tell them in next sessions don't worry so here the first movement second one goes right and then we've got the lumbar part okay so it's finished finished third one torso we have to draw some lines at least three or four to show the movement of the torso section rib cage and pelvis you see I don't draw this line because it makes the drawing symmetrical so I refuse to do that and I try not to do that and uh, as you can see the lines repeat each other's uh, movement so there's a kind of repetition and repetition makes movement so let's go to next one legs you have to see what's the bearing weight leg in our model in our drawing first you have to check it out so the right one is the weight bearing leg so first draw the weight bearing leg then we've got supporting leg this one so as you can see I just try to make it simple and draw it with 
just two or three lines each part of the leg You can exaggerate in all the poses in order to get a better movement and action and to have a kind of story in your drawing. Okay, the last part is just drawing the arms. Look, first I try to have this movement, then I make it different here. So, because the design of the body is asymmetrical, so if you have this line, the next one should be like this. So, don't forget that. But here, to make it more simple for you guys, I just make it an S shaped line. This one, actually this guy is throwing the stone, so you have to make the action clear and make the story clear for the viewer. So another thing that I think is necessary to know for you guys is wrapping lines. Wrapping lines. It's a kind of line that goes on the surface of something. For example, you got these lines, then you draw on the surface and we call these lines wrapping lines and what are they good for they show us perspective and the movement of form and the shape in perspective so for example here we have the movement now now i want to give it a sense of volume so i draw these lines and let's draw the neck here you see I draw wrapping lines for the mid section of the body here we have pelvis here to show that the leg is facing here I use wrapping lines 
And as you can see, I don't use them in the middle of a shape, for example here, because it would disturb the movement of eye. So for example, eye is coming down. Here you draw these lines and it disturb it. So try to draw wrapping lines in the start of an action of a form. For example, here at the joints. And do not draw uh, contours, contour line. For example, I see that, for example, in the leg, we've got these lines. But drawing these lines without knowing what are they, what they are, actually, it's useless. And it would destroy your drawing. Because all we need in, in our drawing is have, to have movement. By drawing them, you just you're just making snowman. So it's a, actually it's finished, I think. So I hope you guys like this video, please share this video with others with whom you know that need actually to, to need to have, have more information about gesture drawing, about figure drawing. I would appreciate it if you guys just share it with others. Thank you for listening to me, and I see you soon. Goodbye.